Did you ever hear of Jack Custance? Ned shook his head. Shot as a traitor during the Second World War. English as a China Spaniel, but Fenian to his core. He left a wife and one child, a daughter called Philippa. The wife died in Canada, so her rich brother, Robert Wheeler, brought little Philippa back to live in England with his family. She grew up as Philippa Wheeler, and in due course married one Peter Delft, bearing a child, unnamed, ungendered, and undated in the file. Peter Delft died in September 1961, if memory serves, which of course it does. In April 1963, she remarried the merchant banker Jeremy Blackrow, and by the time I came across the file in 63, no one had ever bothered to update it from that day forward. Thus, Philippa Custance became Philippa Wheeler, became Philippa Delft, became Philippa Blackrow. I only read Jack Custance's file to research his early life. I'd been given the tedious job of writing a paper on the profile of your typical British Republican sympathiser, as if such a definable type ever existed. Philippa Blackrow was Oliver Delft's mother. Ned enunciated each word with extreme deliberation, as if afraid the meaning of what he said would totter and collapse. He was her son. He was the son of the very person Paddy wanted me to give the letter to. No cross-referencing, said Babe with a disapproving purse of the lips. Her son applies to the service and they don't connect Oliver Delft with the daughter of a condemned traitor. Well, how can we expect an intelligent service that can't spot a full colonel of the KGB in its ranks to notice a small thing like that? But no wonder Oliver had a touch of cramp when you mentioned her name out of the blue must have put the fear of God into him. So he was a traitor too. Perhaps, but not necessarily. He might have joined without knowing anything about his mother's true allegiances. In either case, said Ned, he couldn't allow me to wander about the world knowing her name. Precisely. If he was any good at his job, he would have to find a way to get rid of you and cover all your tracks. We know how he got rid of you, but I wonder how he hid the trail. Babe's voice trailed off. Ned grasped him by the sleeve. What are you thinking? You have to think of it from Delft's point of view murmured Babe, more to himself than to Ned. He's on duty. A flash comes through that a youth has been picked up with a document that might interest the service. He interrogates you. All seems fine. You turn out to be nothing but an innocent. He discovers his own mother is implicated. What can he do? His section chief will ask all kinds of questions next day. We see from the log, Oliver, that you were sent out to a police station. Who was this boy? What did he have on him? "'What would I do if I were Delft?' "'I don't follow,' said Ned. "'What exactly—' "'Shh!' Babe put a finger to his lips. "'I would pretend to be playing you. "'That's what I'd do. "'I've turned him, Chief. "'He's feeding me all kinds of gold. "'But hands off, he's mine, and I don't want him compromised. "'But he would need to give something in return. "'There's the tape, of course, but that had his mother's name on it. "'He'd need another.' "'Did he, Ned, did he by any chance get you to say anything specific on the tape? "'After his attack of cramp, that is?' "'I'm not sure. Yes, Portia's family. "'He wanted to know about her father. "'I told him what I knew, and he asked for the full address. "'He even asked me to say it twice. "'But why? I still don't understand.' "'Mine was a grubby trade,' said Babe. "'Let me tell you what Oliver did.' "'That night,' As Ned lay awake, another name joined the others pounding inside his head. Now it was Delft, Fenderman, Garland, and Cade. Delft, Fenderman, Garland, and Cade. Delft, Fenderman, Garland, and Cade. He banged the names with his fist against his thigh. He scratched them with his nails into the palm of his hand. He burned the names into his brain. Delft, Fenderman, Garland, and Cade. Delft, Fenderman, Garland, and Cade.